Hello everyone, welcome to lesson one of Destination Aviation Virtual Summer Camp. Each video will begin with a review of the materials you will need for the activities, a quick lesson, and end with several activities you can participate with. Now on to today's lesson. Today's lesson is all about the fundamentals of flight. You will learn about the parts of the airplane and their functions, as well as basic flight instruments and their functions. You will also learn why and how an airplane flies. For today's lesson, you will need two sheets of paper, the handout in your summer camp kit titled Parts of an Airplane, the flight instrument poster that is also in your summer camp kit, and a pencil. To begin our lesson, let's first take a look at our airplane we have here. The main body of the airplane is the fuselage. The wings, tail, and nose of the airplane all attach to the fuselage. This is where people and cargo ride in the plane. Sometimes the fuselage also holds a fuel tank. The airplane's wings are its means of flight. The wing produces lift, which allows the airplane to leave the ground. All wings serve the same purpose, but almost all of them look different. The wing can be mounted on the airframe in various locations and configurations. The shape of the wing is called an airfoil. This shape produces lift by creating a low pressure area on top of the wing and a high pressure area on the bottom. The air on top of the wing moves faster than the air flowing under the wing, which results in less pressure on top than on the bottom of the wing. In the front of the airplane, we have a propeller. Much like the wings, the shape of the propeller is an airfoil. The propeller is attached to the power plant, or engine, which is located inside the cowling. The engine spins the propeller, which produces thrust in the same way that wings produce lift. This thrust is what propels the airplane through the air. The engine also drives other systems that support the operation of an aircraft. Let's now look at our basic flight instruments. You can use the flight instrument poster in your summer camp kit to follow along. There are generally at least six flight instruments. The airspeed indicator displays the speed at which the airplane is moving through the air. The attitude indicator displays the attitude of the airplane in relation to the horizon, such as nose up, nose down, or wings banked. The altimeter displays the altitude of the airplane above sea level. The turn coordinator displays the rate at which a turn is being made. The miniature airplane banks in the direction of the turn. At the bottom of the instrument is a ball in a glass tube called an inclometer. The inclometer indicates the quality of a turn. The heading indicator displays the heading, or direction the airplane is flying. Finally, the vertical speed indicator displays whether the airplane is in level flight, climbing, or descending. Now that we've learned about the parts of the airplane and its instruments, let's learn why and how an airplane can fly through a quick explanation of the forces of flight. There are four forces acting on an aircraft in flight. These are lift, weight, thrust, and drag. Lift is a force that is created by the airfoil or the wings. In level flight, it is the upward force that opposes weight. Weight consists of the load from the aircraft, crew, fuel, passengers, cargo, and baggage. Weight is a force that pulls the aircraft downward because of gravity. Thrust is the forward force produced by the power plant and the propeller. It opposes the force of drag. Drag is a rearward force caused by the disruption of airflow by the shape of the plane, including the wing, the fuselage, landing gear, and other objects. When an airplane is in straight and level flight, the opposing forces are balanced. According to Newton's third law of motion, for every action or force, there is an equal but opposite reaction or force. So, whenever we change something, such as producing more thrust or moving the flight controls, the forces become unbalanced. This causes the airplane to react by accelerating, turning, climbing, or descending. Great. Now it's your turn. Here are three different activities you can try at home. The first activity is building the world record paper airplane. It may fly far, but does it fly fast? 
Build a paper plane that travels fast and think about why different designs are optimal for different types of missions. The second activity uses just a sheet of paper. You can demonstrate Bernoulli's principle by blowing straight across a strip of paper. Bernoulli's principle states that as the velocity of a fluid or gas increases, its pressure decreases. What do you think is going to happen when I blow across the paper? Will it rise or fall? Why? The last activity you can try from home is testing your memory by using the parts of the airplane handout in your summer camp kit to label the parts of the airplane. We hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on the fundamentals of flight. See you next time.